Hey g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, we're continuing the 12 volt install in the D-Max. And today's video, we're going to be installing the in-vehicle battery charger, the Red Arc BCDC 1240. Let's get started. Now, like you saw in the overview video, we're gonna be using a lithium as part of the charging system and sort of the, the storage component of our 12 volt setup. This is the Volta X 135 amp hour, and it is, it is a basic lithium setup. I may upgrade this guy into the future, but for the moment, I think it's a great starting point if you're just getting into lithium. Now, there's gonna be a little bit of prep we need to do to our battery box, our sort of our all-in-one unit before we go installing anything. And that is, we need to be installing our battery tray. So that's gonna get put in just down the bottom here like that. So basically this back wall is where all of our bits and bobs are gonna go. The, the, the monitor shunt, that kind of thing, our, our fuse blocks, that sort of thing. It's all gonna live there. So I need something to attach it to. And there's a couple of things you can use. In my case, I'm gonna be using some marine ply. So that's the first step here is to prep your box, ready to mount down the battery so we can start installing the BCDC. Uh, but there we go, all nice and installed on the inside. So our next step for the build is to get the battery itself back in here, get the thing final, final installed so that we can move on to installing the wiring for our Red Arc controller. So because we're using the battery box and I wanted that whole sort of semi-permanent install so I can take this guy back out if, uh, you know, if, if I need to, I wanna be able to have as least mucking around as possible to be able to, to pull it out if I do need to. So we're gonna be using Anderson plugs for all of our connections in and out of the box. We're gonna be doing exactly the same thing with our yellow wire, which is our solar input. That's one of the really cool things with the Red Arc unit is the fact that it has a built-in solar MPPT controller. So we'll take advantage of that because when I'm parked up camping on the beach, that sort of thing, I wanna be able to pull out the solar blanket, which has got one of these on the end, one of the red Anderson plugs. The benefit of these is they're not interchangeable with uh, another one. So, you know, if you're simple like me, you can't get confused. You can only plug solar into solar. So we'll use one of these on the outside as well. And the idea is that I can plug in the solar without having to open anything up. And then finally, we'll do the same thing with the earths and the smaller wire inputs so that the idea is, everything will be fully closed up. You don't have to open anything. You can just go plug, plug, and it is ready to roll. Now on the channel, I do have a full video on Anderson plugs, how to use them, how to install them, and how to wire them. So I'm not gonna be going into full detail on how to do these guys for our Red Arc install, but if you want more information on that, check out the video up the top. So they should look a little bit like this. We have our ones at the front, the Andersons at the front and at the back. The ones at the back are going to be the ones, remember, for the loom to plug into when we install the box. So they're both the inputs there for the BCDC and our extra wires. And then at the front, we have our solar input here. And this is gonna be our extra Anderson plug for plugging in things like the fridge and other accessories. So the next step, now that we've got these in place, is to come across to our actual wiring and start running our wiring to their respective plugs. So we're going to need a common earth with all of our setup really, not just the BCDC, but everything else. So what we're going to use is one of these bus bars. These are a 150 amp bus bar. So the idea with this is that we're gonna install it down here and put that into place so that all of our negatives can come across onto this. And then we can have a single negative from that exiting out the back to one of our Anderson plugs, which will connect straight to the chassis. Now to get cracking on our wiring, we're gonna start with the black one, which is the earth. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it from the red arc unit down the bottom there. Now you probably noticed it's not gonna be long enough for this application, so not gonna reach it, but never fear, red arc is here. They have included some connector crimps, which you can see in here. They come with five in the packet and they even have, whoop, just throwing that away. They even have some handy dandy heat shrink, which is perfect for this. So what we need to do is grab some of our six BNS, our six AWG cable, 
cool. We've got some black stuff here. We just need to measure the length from there to there to get the right size and crimp them together. Now, as far as actually crimping these guys onto your cable, there is a couple of different ways you can do it. You can use more of a manual style crimper like this set here, or there's hydraulic crimping tools as well, which look a little bit like this. They have a whole bunch of different dies, and these ones are going to give you a really solid crimp on the connection itself. Now, if you've never used one of these or you're not sure which way to go, I have got a full install video or how-to video on how to use both of these tools. So if you're keen for a little bit more info on how to do that, check out the video up the top there. So here's the end result. We have a nice, good quality connection and our joiner here as well. The main thing to remember with these is just take your time and ensure that you get a really good quality connection. Right, so once our earth is ready to roll, we can just feed this through underneath here now. Then once you've got it here ready to roll, we can just temporarily install it into our bus bar until we do our final connections at the end. So next up is our brown wire, and this is our positive lead that goes to our auxiliary battery, which in our case is, is right here. So to do this one, we need to use a MIDI fuse in between. So that's where we grab our 60 amp kit and we've got everything we need in here. What we're gonna do is put one of these guys in line before we get to our positive terminal on our auxiliary battery. So this is what the MIDI fuses look like, the fuse holders that come with the 60 amp fuse kit. They're a pretty high quality unit. They've got the little clips that keep everything nice and covered. And then you can see in here, we have nylock nuts, which is awesome. And the idea is that you have a 60 amp MIDI fuse, and then that sits in the middle there like that, obviously under the nuts though. So what we wanna do, with our little housing is that's going to effectively sit right in there, just like that. We'll have our brown lead going to one side and then a secondary part will be just a short run straight to the battery terminal itself. Now, just be mindful when you are positioning your fuse holder, you wanna make sure that the cable run itself has no sort of gnarly right angles or anything like that. And then once you're happy with the position of everything, you can make sure that the fuse holder is secured. I'm using some gnarly outdoor extreme double-sided tape. I'll put the link in the description. Make sure that you don't install the fuse itself, leave that out for the moment. We're gonna install that last of all. So next up, we have our positive wire that will be coming from our main starting battery. And in our case, because we're installing it in our box, this is one of the ones we want to route out and out the back so that it is able to be connected via our Anderson plug. Our yellow wire with the solar input is gonna be much the same, except around, instead of around the back there, we're gonna go around the front, being that our solar input is right here. Now, one thing to bear in mind when you are installing cable like this through a hole in a surface is you want to make sure a couple of things. One, even though the wire is insulated, you want to make sure that you're using some grommets just like these so that you have a nice soft surface around where the hole is for the cable to come out. The reason for that is with movement and vibration over time, if it is against a hard edge, you are ultimately going to start wearing this away. And being that, you know, it's power, it's 12 volt electricity, uh, that's not gonna be a good thing. You don't want any stray current starting to zap around the place. Cool, so making really good progress. We're on the home stretch here as far as wiring everything up. We've only got these little guys left. These two here, our green and our orange, these define what kind of charge profile we want our BC DC to start charging our battery with. And because we are running the lithium battery, what we need to do for these guys is basically just join them together. So that's pretty straightforward. There, there is a, a whole video that I've done on the channel to show some of the best ways to join these. We will be using one of these little doodads, which I think are just absolutely awesome. It's a solder and heat shrink in one. So we're gonna be using that to join both of these guys together. Onto the last man standing, our blue wire. So what this one's for is for our alternator, basically telling the BCDC, it's telling it, hey, you need to wake up, you need to turn on, the alternator's working, start charging the battery. So it's going to depend on what type of vehicle that you have and what type of sort of alternator that you're running in the vehicle. So this guy needs to run down, around and out, just like our other connectors. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of the extra little hole here. 
we're going to use this connector from Nava. It's a waterproof harness connector. Basically, it's just a trigger wire that's gonna tell our unit inside there when to turn on. So that's the last step of our wiring inside the box anyway. So all we gotta do is run this cable around, get your connector, feed it through so that the connector -y bit is sitting on the outside. So we've got something to actually connect to. Grab some standard auto wiring cables, some of this sort of stuff. 10 amps is gonna be plenty. Join him together here, run him around and through. Right, so that is it. As far as wiring the VCDC itself, we're done. We've done everything we need to. Now what we need to do for our application is get this guy ready to go into that guy. So one, we need to run a cable from here down to a chassis mount to earth the whole system. And two, we need to actually run our power cable from the front of the engine bay underneath the DMAX and out into the tub so that we can actually provide power to the BCDC to charge the battery. And then three, finally, we need to get our little connector here. We're using the red wire. So basically all we need to be doing is connecting an ignition source to our red wire so that our harness that will sit and live in the back of the tub coming out there will have these two. We just need to then connect that guy in, connect that guy in and we're away. So as far as how to get the power from the engine bay into the back of the tub, there is a, an easy solution. Well, there's a solution that I'm rolling with, and that is there is a grommet that lives just behind there, and then there's another grommet that lives just behind there. So because our battery box is basically gonna be where the Isuzu logo is there, and the way I've oriented the power, I wanna use this side. So, so what we need to do is, similarly to when we installed these guys, we need to lop a little bit of a hole in the tub itself so that we can access the grommet and be able to feed our cable through. And a couple of different ways you can do that. If you've got a really fat drill bit, that's the way to go, just really gently so you're not tearing into the grommet behind the scenes there as well. Something like a Stanley knife would also work. Now for me, I'm just gonna use some of this rubber automotive seal. So I'll just run that around there to provide a bit better seal and cable to come out to our connector from across there. Ooh, these are still working well. Still working well, some gas strut action. Thank God we don't have to go through that <laughs> grommet over there again. That's, that's just such a pain. We wanna go from our battery side. So we need to grab some of our 6AWG, 6BNS cable. And then basically we should be able to drop it straight down the side there. We wanna go under our chassis rail, all the way under, and then between this gap here up and through our new little hole. Grab uh, our leftover cable here, and then we need to run that along with everything else back down to the tub. And then once you have run all of your cable with the conduit, you want to grab your second midi fuse. This needs to live as close to the cranking battery as possible. So lovely little flat surface here as far as the fuse box goes, and that's where this one's gonna live. So we're going to plonk it right about there, create a lug on this end, and then this end, which ultimately will connect to our battery. And then same thing for the loom that goes through to the tub. An extra lug there. Right, so once you're all connected up here, we wanna leave the fuse out from here just for the moment, but you can go ahead and connect everything with the fuse out, nothing's going to be live. And then the only other thing we need to do down this end of the DMAX is to grab a connector circuit. We wanna get into our fuse box because we need to find an ignition source now we've got our fuse diagram here. What we want to tap into though is this guy right here because what that is, is our AC. Method to the madness here is that one will only turn on when our ignition source is actually running for the rest of the car. Obviously your AC won't work when the car's turned off so that our BCDC will only kick on when the car is running. And then how these guys work is pretty sort of straightforward. The bottom here is designed to clip into an existing fuse, and in this case, the micros. And then what it does is enables a second circuit. You'll see there's two fuse holders. The one at the top is the one that's gonna be going out to the secondary circuit. So this is the one that's gonna run down to the BCDC. You only need a teeny tiny fuse. That one's only a five amp fuse. You probably even put smaller in there if you have one. 
one because all this is literally doing is just telling the BCDC with a tiny little bit of signal that hey the engine's on start charging then the idea is that the bottom fuse you want to use exactly the same as what you're replacing so that it has the same level of protection once you get your positive cables up you just need to terminate them so that is just literally joining our other connector here that was our ignition leads to tell it when to turn on and then connect your anderson plug there as well then the only other thing we need to do before we can give this guy a actual test is we need an earth so grab your earth cable and we want to route it back down the same spot down so it drops down so we can find a bolt to earth to the chassis so here's our cable dropping down from the top. Now there's a few likely candidates. We do have this bolt here, which is the fuel strap, but I would rather use this one right here. There's a bracket that sits nice and neatly against the chassis rail, which is what we want to earth to anyway. So we can basically just run this straight down there. We need to install a, a lug on the end of this guy so we can terminate it there and then do the rest up in the tub. And then once the earth's done underneath, you can reinstall your grommet, get a healthy dose of silicon to seal up any holes, cut this off at the same length as your positive and terminate the last part of the Anderson plug, and then grab some more conduit, and we want this to be one nice solid unit. And then once all your conduit is in place and you've run it all the way to the grommet and back, grab some electrical tape and start wrapping and a bit of the automotive trim, and we are good to go. We are ready to give this a test. And before you plug this guy in, just do a final check. Make sure that your earths are nice and tight. Everything's tightened down. You wanna grab your two midi fuses, one to go into here, and then the other one in the engine bay. Then we can plug it in, check out our status lights, and make sure it's all working as designed. So we get our box in place, and then to connect up, we grab our Anderson, into the top section there, clip him into place, and then our secondary harness, just like that. So let's start the car, and what we should see is some additional lights come on down here. So let's turn it on and see what happens. So we can see our lithium light solid, meaning that we got our charge profile correct. That's always a good thing. We, a little bit difficult to see in the camera there, but the third light down isn't on. That's just overflow from the other lights. We do have solid on our vehicle and then solid on our stage. So great news. We are charging our battery and that is about job done for installing the Red Arc BCDC 1240D. And that also means that is stage one of our D-Max 12 volt setup. There's a couple of items I need to do pretty well straight away now, including the battery master switch. That guy's gonna be important so that we can actually unplug this and have that cable isolated. And then from there, of course, we still have a whole bunch of stuff. We've got the TJM air compressor to put in there. We've got the Victron battery monitor. We've got our active cooling that we're gonna be having built in there to keep everything nice and cool, as well as our tub lights, having that all running off here. And then also stuff like our 12 volt plugs and USBs, which will sit in both of these sides. So there you go, I hope that you found that helpful, the install of the Red Arc BCDC. If you did and you're keen to see more of this kind of content, as always, check out the playlist down below. Give it a bit of a thumbs up if that's your style and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the little ding, turn on the notifications and that way any of the new videos, especially for our 12 volt gear, you'll get the notification when the video is released. As mentioned, everything that I used to do the Red Arc BCDC install, you can find in the description down below. I've found some direct links of everything that I ordered to put together for sort of all of this sort of gear. So save you, save you digging around. You can find it all in the description down below. And other than that, guys, as always, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.